I am an evil man. It didn't happen slowly. Most people grew terrible by degrees. For me, it happened instantly. From comparatively tri trivial wickedness, I passed with the stride of a giant into years of unpardonable crimes so terrible I can't even speak the of them out loud. The story I'm going to tell you is one of the greed, vice, horror, and murder. Why? I am dying. But before I die, I long for the sympathy of my fellow human beings because I am dying as the victim of a strange and horrible phenomenon. Wilson attends a strict boarding school called Dr. Bransby School, located in the, a misty English village. Though the campus is extensive, it feels like a gothic prison to William. It has creaky staircases, a spike fence around the perimeter, and many dark and spooky corners. William likes to manipulate his classmates. He tricks them out of their toys, treats, and money, but no one seems to catch on. He is so popular and outgoing that nobody suspects his dark, mendacious motives. William has one rival, a boy who is also named William Wilson. The second William was born with a birth defect. He can't speak above a whis whisper. One day, William is playing a game of football with some classmates. Hey, William, how come your brother never speaks in more than a whisper? What do you mean? I don't have a brother. Stop kidding around. You and the other William are so much alike. You both started school on the same day. You dress the same, and you have the same mannerisms. We are not related. I am, I am of noble birth, and that William is not. I come from a wealthy family, and that William does not. Besides, I outperform him in sports, in academics, and just in everything else. I could totally see that, Jim, but that probably... You're practically perfect, William. Hi, William. You shouldn't be speaking to me. You shouldn't be speaking to me. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me. Don't you understand how easily I could destroy you? Don't you, you? understand how easily I could destroy you? Ah! ah. You will paint the outhouse tomorrow. But it's supposed to snow. Perhaps you should have thought of that before you decided to study. It was an accident, sir. I didn't want to get attention for breaking dress code by wearing a soiled shirt. I don't want to hear your excuses. In fact, as punishment for arguing with me, you will shovel snow tonight. But I have to cram for a chemistry test. Perhaps you should not have waited until the last minute to study. The principal walks away from a panicked-looking person. Oh, hey, Percy. Oh, William, what am I going to do? Simple. Shovel the snow, I will break into Mr. Olson's office and borrow a copy of tomorrow's test. Borrow? Don't you mean steal? Steal's a strong word, don't you think? I don't know, William. It's pretty risky. Think what Principal Bransby will do if you flunk. You have a point. William wanders down the hall to Mr. Olson's room. To his surprise, the door is unlocked. He's about to walk inside when the second William appears beside him. Hello? Ah, you scared me. Didn't see you. Where'd you come from? That's the question, isn't it? Why are you dressed like me? Egads, man, haven't you combined your combed your hair like me as well? Egads, man. Do you insist on stealing my mannerisms too? Do you insist? I steal nothing, but I enjoy how it annoys you. You will pay for this. You will pay for this. After the second William leaves, William walks into Mr. Olson's office. He steals the test and slips out of the room. You will paint the outhouse tomorrow. But it's supposed to snow. Perhaps you should have thought of that before you decided to study. It was an accident, sir. I didn't want to get attention for breaking dress code by wearing a soiled shirt. I don't want to hear your excuses. In fact, as punishment for arguing with me, you will... Shovel snow tonight. But I have to cram for a chemistry test. Perhaps you should not have waited until the last minute to study. The principal walks away from a panicked looking person. Oh, hey, Percy. Oh, William, what am I going to do? Simple. Shovel the snow. 
I will break into Mr. Olson's office and borrow a copy of tomorrow's test. Borrow? Don't you mean steal? Steal's a strong word, don't you think? I don't know, William. It's pretty risky. Think what Principal Bransby will do if you flunk. You have a point. William wanders down the hall to Mr. Olson's room. To his surprise, the door is unlocked. He's about to walk inside when the second William appears beside him. Hello? Ah, you scared me. Didn't see you. Where'd you come from? That's the question, isn't it? Why are you dressed like me? Egads, man, haven't you combined your, combed your hair like me as well? Egads, man. Do you insist on stealing my mannerisms too? Do you insist? I steal nothing, but I enjoy how it annoys you. You will pay for this. You will pay for this. After the second William leaves, William walks into Mr. Olson's office. He steals the test and slips out of the room. A few days later, Percy runs up to William. You really saved me with that test. I aced it. Not so loud. Do you still have the test? Yes. Should I bring it to you? Yes. Lay it on my bed. I'm in room 33 down this hall. Percy has no idea room 33 is actually the second William's room, not mine. Grades are posted for midterms. The two boys head down to the main hall. Lists are posted for each subject. Students crowd around trying to see their rankings. William checks algebra. He's number one. The second William is number two. Next William looks at French. The second William came in first. So he beat me in French. Surely I beat him in everything else. But that is not the case. The second William took first in history, biology, and literature. Principal Bransby even posted a commendation congratulating the second William for his scholastic achievement. Congratulations on getting first standing in algebra. Why, thank you, William. I assure you that by the end of term, I will be first in every subject. William leaves the hall. He takes out a sheet of paper and scribbles the following note. Dear Principal Bransby, it has come to my attention that Percy cheated on his chemistry test. I know he only wanted to be successful, but I am worried that this mistake will start him on a life of crime. The true guilty part is William Wilson, too, who stole a copy of the test. Evidence can be found on his bed in room 33. Signed, Anonymous. William slips a note under Principal Bransby's door and, and waits, hoping that the second William will get expelled. But nothing ever comes of it. When Principal Bransby goes and to the second Williams room, the test has vanished. The relationship between the two Williams deteriorates into utter hatred. One day they run into each other on the staircase. The second William, as usual, is dressed and groomed exactly. Imitating me? The second William says nothing. Speak! The second William stays silent. William gets angry and shoves the second William, who falls backwards on the ground. Like a cat, the second William springs up and lunges at at the first William. They fight a while and, until both boys tire and return to their rooms. One night, William sneaks into the second William's room to play a mean joke on him. The second William is asleep with curtains drawn around his bed. In the darkness, the room is cast in an eerie moonlight glow. William pulls back the curtains. He gasps in horror at the second William, sitting up wide awake with a strange and sinister smile. How can I, how can this be? I know we look alike, but this sleeping, this sleeping boy is an exact copy of myself. What is happening? Yes, we have the same name, the same mannerisms, and we started school here on the same day. But this is simply impossible. William is so frightened that he runs back from the room, packs a bag, and leaves Dr. Bransby's school forever.